Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Raw Online Report. Today's guest, you know him very well, the owner of Redcon 1, and now the owner of not one, but two Redcon 1 gyms. I was just at the grand opening of this awesome facility in Nashville. Going to talk all about it. Please welcome Aaron Singerman. How are you, Aaron? Thanks. Thanks for having me, Ron. I appreciate being on the show again, and uh, I'm very happy to have had you at the Redcon 1 gym in Nashville. We're actually there for the grand opening. Yeah, and it was quite quite spectacular. I'll talk. We'll talk about that. But first of all, I want to know. You know, every every meathead dreams about owning a gym. We, it's, I, I don't know anyone that never that that didn't say that. When did you first think of, man, I'd love to own a gym? And when did it actually become sort of a reality? So I, I like you said, I, I always dreamed in one way or another. Like like every meathead, it'd be cool to own a gym, but I never really thought I would. And then uh, Redcon One, when it really took off. I certainly didn't have time to, to start thinking about anything other than right kind of one because it's been such a, you know, exciting, fast journey and stressful journey. So starting another business um, really wasn't in, in my head, but there was this uh, gym that Eduardo and I uh, trained at called Trainer Space, very close to the office, like uh, a long walk, or not even a long walk, a short walk from the, from the office. And it was a training gym where they just had trainers. Uh, like it was, the idea was kind of like a boutique. You go in there, you have a trainer, you have a gym membership, and you don't really go there without a trainer. And the gym was really suffering. Uh, when we went, they actually allowed me and Eduardo to go work out there without a trainer. They kind of broke off from the initial idea because it was doing so poorly. And uh, I mean, we'd go at five o'clock, the gym would be, be me and Eduardo, maybe one or two other people. And this is an 18,000 square foot gym. So it was very empty and very big and very empty. Uh, probably way too big for this kind of model uh, of having a trainer gym anyway. Yeah. So um, I met with uh, the, the owner there actually asked to speak with me about buying the gym. And uh, I knew that I wasn't interested in buying the gym, but I liked the guy Chris a lot. I thought he was a nice guy. So out of respect, uh, I said, like, come to the office and tell me about the gym. And he uh, brought in the P&L and showed me, you know, profit loss statement and showed me that their best month, they lost $40,000. So that was their best. Mm. And so I told him, man, I, I love the facility. It's, it was beautiful. Uh, great bones. You know, it didn't have good equipment at all. Uh, it didn't have the right kind of atmosphere, but it did, it did have, it was a beautiful gym. And uh, he spent $5 million to build it out. So it was, a, you know, a, a tremendous gym. And um, in terms of like the look and the feel of the ambiance. Yeah. And uh, I told him, man, I know you probably put a lot of money and heart and soul into this place, but it's not worth anything. Nobody's going to buy this a gym that's losing $40,000 a month. And he said, what would you give me for it? And uh, my initial thing was to tell him, you know, no, thank you. But I, I kind of had a moment where I, that, that meathead, pardon me, said that the non-businessman, pardon me, said, you know, Worst case scenario, I shut this thing down and just use it privately for pictures and athletes that come in. It's the, it would be the coolest private gym in history. It, it would be like next level. I said, you know, it's twenty four thousand bucks a month is what it costs to for rent, electricity, everything from the gym with no with no employees basically. Okay. And I said, you know, I could probably worst case scenario if this totally doesn't work out, I could probably write that off as a marketing expense and it would be okay. So I said, okay, tell you what, Chris, I won't buy the gym but I would be willing to take the liability for the next two years that you have on lease and I'll take it over. If you leave everything, leave the bread spot on, leave the TV, leave the computer, leave everything. And uh, it took him a few days to decide. And he said, okay, we'll do it. And so when we took the gym over, it had 80 members uh, paying 280. Yeah. Yeah. Paying $200 a month for these for the membership um, and training with the trainers there. And um, we ended up losing most of those members because we, we changed the whole gym. I mean, the gym, we play loud music, there's cursing. I mean, it's not the, old uh, rich people gym than it was uh but before you know so uh we started the gym off and uh right now we have about two thousand members wow gym went from losing forty thousand dollars a month to making well over profitable significantly more profitable than it was losing money which is something that i wouldn't have predict predicted i mean uh you could hypothetically somebody if this was their job you could live very comfortably off of the money that the one gym makes and so uh, I haven't done that. What I've done is buy more equipment and, and, and then took the money that it was making and reinvested into the second gym. And the second gym was also a very similar situation. Uh, we make our, a lot of our products in Tennessee for Redcon 1. And I, I, because we make a lot of the products, we ended up having a warehouse and office in Tennessee and uh, Spring Hill. And so because we had that, I decided I love uh, Tennessee. I love Nashville. It's, it's awesome. And it's totally different than Boca Raton. So Having three little boys, I like the idea of them seeing the seasons. I like the idea of them being out in the woods and seeing, you know, more than just concrete and palm trees, you know, to get the, the kind of feel of being out there in the country. Also, you can get a lot of land there. In Boca, you know, nobody's getting three, four, five acres of land. It doesn't exist really here. Um, so I, uh, I said, okay, let's get a house out there. And so we, uh, we, when we got a house out there, 
we fell in love with it even more. And of course, like any good meathead, you have to find the best gym in the area. And so we went from gym to gym. And uh, when I came to this particular gym, which is called the National Athletic Club, I was like, man, same thing, not beautiful, like the other one, beautiful, but like it had the bones, right? And also on a Thursday night with, uh, at 6 p.m., they had not, I mean, it was literally me, uh, Taylor, uh, who's our uh, head of logistics. Uh, he and I went in there at six o'clock and the gym is huge. It's 58,000 square feet, as you see. And, yes. and there's probably, probably 10 people in there. And when I walked in, yeah, when I walked in, I tried to buy a membership because I knew I liked it. I said, I'll buy a, a three paid in fulls for a year for me, Darielle and Taylor. And they're like, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and try it anyway. Go ahead and try it. And I'm like, uh, okay. Like that's like cardinal sin. You know, you're, you're ready to sign up. These guys didn't want to do the paperwork. That's the front that big red flag. <laughs> Oof. I'm like, I'm like, damn. I saw all the great old used equipment and I saw, uh, I also saw the things that needed to be fixed up. It was carpet. Oh, the floor was carpet. So it was all ripped up. Uh, ripped up it looked you couldn't make the place look clean because they had dirty ripped carpet everywhere i mean uh there was paint off the walls there was the bathrooms had like mold i mean it was it was gross the gross gym but it had the good bones and so i said man i'm gonna find out who's the manager and i'm gonna see if, they, if they'd like to get out of the gym you know figure it's a liability for them they can't possibly make, make money anymore and um so i uh I, I reached out found the manager's manager got his number talked to him and, uh, and then the next day, the gym closed. After 20 years of being open, closed. Um, and, they, and the guy called me and said, just so you know, you can't buy the gym now because it's closed. And I was, like, I was like, holy shit. Like, this guy thinks I'm not going to buy it. Now, this is the perfect situation. You have a, a gym full of, like you saw, hundreds of pieces of great equipment yeah. that needs love. It needs to be refurbished, repads, you know, get new pads. I mean, and, and take care of this gym. But it was, seemed like the best opportunity ever. And so I, I ended up talking to the owner. And uh, he said, look, you, can, you can't buy the members. I already get, we ended up selling the members to a local gym, the 3,000 or so members. I figured those guys are going to be really pissed because like if you're a member at one gym and now you're like, oh no, you're down the road at the other gym that you chose not to be a member at because we sold your membership to them. Hmm. Um, so I figured, well, okay, that's even better because I don't want to pay for the membership because that, that would be worth something. Right. So I was able to take over the, um, the, the lease basically for, for no money. Um, they gave me $175,000 in TI, tenant improvement. Uh, I ended up spending about $300,000 more to make the gym look like the way that you saw it look, um, which is tons of new equipment. We redid everything. I mean, it's like a beautiful new gym. And uh, basically for, for $300,000, I got this incredible thing that you're, you guys are seeing. You Hopefully everybody will get a chance to see. And so that's how I own two gyms. It's not, it was not a thing that I predicted. And within, I know you saw how many people we had over 5,000 people for the grand open, which is yeah, it was it was wild. It was, it was wild. So we're, we're approaching a thousand members uh, now, um, which for us is about the break even point, And we are less than uh, less than a month in. Wow. Uh, so you know, the, cool. the, the thing that really surprised me was you turned that around from, from the time you bought it and it looked horrible to the time you opened it was only what, like two months, three months. It was, it was, uh, it was a little less than 12 weeks. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. It was, and we did, man, everybody thought I was crazy saying, giving like the, the timeline that I did. Yeah. Everybody did. We, and we ended up doing it all ourselves, which is interesting. We have so many smart, talented people here at Redcon that I was able to take people from Boca, like Eddie, our warehouse manager. And he was able to form his own, like a GC, form his own crew of guys that he found in Tennessee um, and, and get the work done ourselves. Because no, no GC, we could not. The timeline they were giving us is, you know, because it's busy in national. National is the fastest growing city in America. Really? And so um, there, there's constant building. There's lots of work for these uh, general contractors. So we brought somebody in just to look at the floors, to redo, to take the equipment off, to polish the concrete floors, and then put the equipment back. We were quoted 300000 just for that. Wow. Because it's a lot of surface area. So we, we, ended up, we ended up doing that for sixty grand. So stuff like that. We were able to do it fast and cheap. And uh, it's, it's, man, it's going to be, I mean, the gym is already unbelievable and crazy, but the, the success it's going to bring, because it's, it's unlike any other gym in Tennessee and maybe in, maybe in America, you know? Yeah, no, the, the, you, and you guys were down to the wire because, you know, me and uh, our, our cameraman, Hector, we came in there Friday to check it out around, I don't know, four o'clock or something. We we're a little early and it, were, it was still scissor oh, yeah. lifts and well, it's, you know, things are still being finished. You did it. You, you pulled it off. I was, I was kind of nervous for you, but I was like, man, nah, Aaron knows what he's doing. But uh, <laughs> no, we did it. We were down to the wire around. It was that they stayed all night long to, fit, to wow. finish everything. So, yeah. so tell I me like, about, uh, I like yeah. 
the, the grand opening itself was uh, was something else. So we you started out Friday night with the VIP workout. Uh, I followed around this this group of superstars. It was uh, Kai Green, Dana Lynn Bailey, Louis Uridel, Blessing of Wabadoo, uh, Q, what's it called? Q, the mental entity, Quentin, is, what's his Quentin. name? Q, French guy. So they were working out. I was following them around. Quentin. Yeah. And um, it was, uh, that was the, the first, the first look I really had at the gym. And I'm walking around like a, like a nerd in paradise with the equipment. Uh, that's what I got to get into. Where did you, that you handpicked all the equipment yourself uh, with, with the help of someone else, I imagine. But I saw some pieces well, in there I've Steve never Steve seen. Who was it? Yeah, so Steve Hartley is my good friend who owns Super Fitness Gym Equipment, used gym equipment. Yeah. He was at the gym opening with his wife. Yeah, I have a, I, like I said, I've been a fan and kind of a connoisseur of gym equipment uh, my whole life. So I started training when I was 13 years old. So I know what I like. And I'm kind of, especially now, owning a gym and going through a lot of equipment and getting a chance to use a lot of stuff and kind of being even more into it. Uh, I've definitely found the brands and the pieces of equipment that I like. And uh, I also have people like Steven and a few other people too, that are constantly on the lookout for me because they know I'm going to buy it basically, you know? So they, I got this cool piece, it's 2000 bucks. It's a uh, flex fitness from, you know, 1983. I go buy it, send, send them the money, send them the money. So um, I'm like the go-to guy when you got cool unique equipment, they know Aaron's going to buy it. Right. So I'm like, uh, there, there are a lot of people that are helping me out and also making some money along the way. Uh, Cause I will buy anything cool and uh, even store it here in the warehouse. If you don't have a place to put it, you know, we store equipment here. Um, so, and then the other big thing is that you saw was the Panada equipment from Italy. Yeah. Um, just incredible. Uh, I worked with Eduardo Panada and Francisco who was there. Their top sales guy was there. Eduardo's dad is a, a engineer, but is also a, a, a bodybuilder. He's in his, I think his seventies now, but he has taken a lot of the designs and improved stuff that you didn't even know needed to be improved. Hmm. And things are uh, very adjustable based on your biomechanics. So like, for example, your vertical leg press, the old school one, there's just, your, it's up and down, right? If, you're, if your ankles don't have as much flexion, you just kind of can't use it all the way right. right. But he, he adjusts it so that you can change the foot pad up and down, angle up and down, um, just everything. Uh, so they have done such a, a tremendous job that even like the equipment that I love back in the day, like some of the hammer strength rows and stuff, they have done so much to them that now you can change every version of the grip. So the grip has multiple places you can go. So if you're doing like a low row, it would normally be here, but now you can do neutral grip. You do overhand grip. You can turn, you know, you can, you can make it longer for your, your height. You can move the seat down or up. You can move it with the pad back and forth. I mean, they've really mastered it. So we have more uh, Panada equipment than anyone in North America now. I've bought over hundred pieces wow. and uh, we have quite a bit more on the way. So hmm. I love those guys. So it's a real combination of new and old. You know, you have brand new products that people haven't seen. And then you have the, the best of the best of old stuff, which truthfully, the old, old stuff, you know, a lot of times is being anything new these days. Oh, yeah. You know, so that, that's because, you know, I'm 51 years old. And I was in California in the, for most almost all the 90s. And I saw pieces in your gym that I hadn't seen since the 90s in California. Some incredible stuff. The flex, the flex leverage pieces. Uh, geez, just some, it's, it's, I tell you, any bodybuilders out there, if you're a real equipment connoisseur, if you ever get anywhere near Nashville, you owe it to yourself to get in there and work out at least once, at least, because it's 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 like you died and went to equipment heaven. It's crazy. <laughs> I mean, and, we're, and we're only three minutes from the airport, Ron, as you experienced. So somebody right. could fly in and uh, literally, on a, you know, a lot of people stop in, uh, in Nashville on the way to somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the Nashville's a fun place to visit anyway. So we're actually getting a ton of day passes right now. I, I knew we were last... In the last week, we had several hundred people that are, that are doing day passes that are from out of town that happen to be landing. And they're like, oh, I have a layover for four hours. I'm going to go to the Red Con gym and then come back. Yeah. It's pretty neat. It's like a five-minute yeah. five minute Uber ride from the airport. Literally. Oh, it literally is. Literally is a five-minute Uber ride. So yeah. you put together the grand opening. That was a, that must have taken some planning, especially when you – I know you did all this kind of – you didn't have a lot of time to put all this together, but it seemed like something that had been in the works for about a year. I know it wasn't. Uh, geez, you had seminars, you had uh, contests, you had giveaways. It was yeah. just, you know, what were uh, when you were thinking, I'm going to do a grand opening. What were, in your head? What were you thinking? You wanted to have? Uh, so I knew I wanted it to be huge because that's the, the, the kind of the way that I would do everything. But the truth is, Ron, is that I have a, a crazy good team. You know, I uh, we have 150 employees here at the office, and have about 50 in Nashville, and about 70 at the gyms now. And there are a lot of very smart people. So I really I can't even take credit. You know, Skylar runs our events and she put together a team to, to take this thing on. And they just come to me and say, hey, 
it's this much money for this. Do you want to do it? And I'll go, yes or no. And, and that's kind of like, I showed up not knowing exactly what to expect. I mean, we had a meeting here um, the day before. Um, I know, I'm sorry, not the, day before, the week before when, when Rob Bailey was in town here uh, visiting me. And he watched the meeting. And he's like, whoa, that, that's how it's done? Because they ask, they're, they're giving me what they're, what they're thinking. And I just go, okay, 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 yeah, let's do it, yeah. And that's kind of it. And then, and then I went and, and then it all worked out. So, uh, you know, usually, um, well, not usually, I'm very fortunate to have such a good team that, that I, I can't take credit for all the work that was done uh, to get the thing ready because it was a tremendous, huge event. And that, that was really my thing. So I wanted to make a big impact. I wanted the people of Nashville to know about the gym and, uh, and to impress people, to, to blow their socks off. And uh, I think we did that. You do, oh, definitely. I mean, my goodness. Like you say, it was packed all, it was slammed in there all day long. All day yeah. long, it was like, you know, bolt, shoulder to shoulder. Um, the one thing that also kind of impressed me is, you know, we have a couple other gyms. Uh, Brandon Curry and his, his, uh, his buddy uh, Brent Lafferty, they've already yeah. opened a couple of carbon cultures. I looked at the map of Nashville that Hector showed me. And you guys are all spaced pretty well. Yes. But rather than being competitors with each other, you you actually went into sort of a partnership where people can use all three gyms for a for a discounted rate, correct? Yeah. So Brent uh, Brent is the owner of Armada Nutrition, who makes a lot of our supplements. Yeah. So uh, we are very close friends and uh, basically like business partners so essentially. And so I knew I didn't want to hurt him uh, and his business. So before we ever opened the gym, when I just had the idea that day before I even knew they were going to close, I called him and said, Hey, by the way, this is what I'm thinking. What do you think? And he's like, sure. He's like, it's perfect distance. We're like a triangle. It's, like, it's not, it's not going to hurt us. And to be honest, the, their gyms are, are, are different. They, you know, they're, they are in a different area. They're a different kind of feel. This is a huge gym. Those are both, both of their gyms are significantly smaller and they have arsenal strength equipment almost exclusively. So they have different stuff. So if you're a bodybuilding, if you're a fan of bodybuilding or especially a fan of equipment, it makes sense that we can do a deal where it makes financial sense and you can try all the different equipment and have different places to go for a, a slightly increased fee, then it works. And so he told me right away, he was okay with it. Cause if you have said no, I would have not done it. It's not worth hurting my uh, friendship and my business relationship over uh, the gym. Uh, the gym business is still for fun for me. I mean, yeah, it's making money and stuff, but the, the, the business is, is red kind of one. This is where the money is made. You know, I'm not paying the bills from the gyms. Uh, so I wouldn't want to hurt him. And then Brandon and me have been friends for forever. You know, uh, he, his wife, Brandy is friends with my, my wife, Darielle. And uh, I consider them like actual real friends. And I wouldn't want to hurt them either. I remember when him and Brandon came to walk around the gym when it was before it got started construction. And, uh, and you could tell like they're looking around. You could tell they thought two things. One, it's going to take a lot of work because it was, it was a dump. It was a, it was a shithole that, that had the potential to be shined up and turned into something amazing. Um, and then two, you could tell that they were like worried. And I, I told him right away, like, hey, guys, like, this is not to be competitive. I want to figure out a way to, to work together. I'm not trying to hurt you. I will not. I will never take trainers from your gym. I won't like, you know, so if an employee leaves carbon, I'm not going to let them come over and work for us. You know, I don't want them. I don't want it to be like that. So we were able to figure something out that worked good for everybody. Brandon and, Br and Brandon and Brent were at the grand opening, which is great to see, you know, and uh, there's there's more than enough. Uh, money and success out there for everyone. Uh, I'm a big believer in, in helping people, even if they're competitors, because um, it comes back to you. And if you, if you were so worried about your your business that somebody else is going to be able to take it away by by being friends with them or giving some piece of advice or being honest, then your business is probably not in that great shape to begin with. You know? Sure. So a couple of weeks ago, this gym had zero members. How's it doing now? We're we are approaching a thousand. I don't know. I don't want to tell you the exact number, Ron, but if I tell, I don't want to be wrong. Um, that's one of the great things with the gyms is um, Cody Hunt is running this gym. Steve over here runs the Boca gym and helps and helps run Cody. Well, kind of work with Cody on the other gym, yeah. and uh, that's something that from the very beginning that I, I made very clear to, to Cody when he came and interviewed. A lot of people interviewed for that job. It's, a, it's not only is it an exciting job; it's a it's six figure pay. I mean, it's like a a dream job for uh, for anybody who wanted to be in the gym business, a gym manager. And so I told him that uh, in the very beginning, like, hey, I am not able to, to run the gym. Like, I don't have the bandwidth available to do this. So this is basically Cody's business. He's like my business partner. He's the operator of the gym. So if you need my help, of course, I'll be there. But I'm not going to be able to do anything for you. You know, I'm not going to be able to hire and fire. I'm not going to be able to oversee, you know, your standard operating procedures for, for new members or training. You have to basically pretend this is your gym and by doing that i make sure that they're going to be rewarded where they're sharing profit as it becomes more profitable but i'm not i'm not doing anything 
you know, even at the gym here in Boca, I go once or twice every day, but I'm not going in there and doing team meetings like I do here. I don't have a regular marketing meeting. I'm not overseeing the, the accounting. I don't really, you know, I don't really actively do anything other than work out there um, unless they need me. And then, or, of course, there's the fact that I fired five general managers at the Boca gym before I found Steve. So I will, I will, I will, I will fire them if they're, if they're not being a good partner. Um, but uh, once you get the right person like Steve or like Cody, I mean, they, they, uh, they really take ownership in it. And it's not a, it's not a, a gig or job for them. It's a career, you know? Yeah. You know, this, we have videos of the tour, but this place had some very, very unique uh, things going. You had this cardio theater, which was literally, it looked like a movie theater with, instead of seats, it was cardio pieces and a giant screen. When we were there, it was playing pumping iron. I guess the yeah. different movies all the time. I saw how cool is that? I saw a really cool posing room. I went in and tried out, uh, man, aerobics room. It's, it's just, th this gym is very, very different from, it's a weird hybrid of, you know, the, the, the dream meathead gym, but it also has these amenities that you would expect yeah. at a much fancier type of place that yeah. meathead wouldn't be, wouldn't be welcome at. So, you know, <laughs> what is the target market or is there, is it just, this is a gym for everybody? So it is, it is, I call it elegant hardcore. That's the, uh, the, the MO. And um, one of the things you'll find as we open more gyms or we do end up franchising this is that the branding package stays the same. So every, every gym is going to look and feel you know, this one was a lot bigger. The look and feel should be identical to the Boca gym. And they're very, very close. You will know immediately this is the Red Kremlin gym based on the lighting, the colors, all the, the stuff we have going on in the gym. Um, at the Boca gym, we don't have the room to do a cardio theater, um, but the actual feel and the branding, just like Red Kremlin wine, the branding is very consistent. We're, we're big on branding and, and understanding who we are. And I would say in terms of our target consumer, or in this case, gym member, it's, it's generally somebody who is, wanting to be serious about fitness or already serious about fitness i would say uh it's probably not if you're a, a newbie to the gym and you're trying to lose some weight you probably will feel a little uh hesitant there to walk in and, and feel comfortable it's uh i've heard that the red gungeon boca is intimidating for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing at all and that's why it's important to have tra trainers available and make them feel welcome but i mean it is a specific kind of person if you come to the boca gym we're playing Rage Against the Machine and say motherfucker and, you know, it's, you know, I, we play Nine Inch Nails or whatever, and that may not be for everybody. And I've had people before tell me that they didn't like the music. And I thought, and, and we're in a very fortunate position to say that the gym might not be for you, you know? Um, so I don't really want everybody there. I don't care. You know, it's not, it's really truly a passion project. If somebody goes to the gym and goes, I don't really like this gym, or I wish the lighting were different, or, don't go to the gym. So um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty cool, comfortable with that. At, at the uh, Red Con Gym Boca, once we hit the 2000 person limit, once we hit the, the number, we're not including employees, we're going to start an application process. We'll have to apply to become a member and we'll have to accept. It. That's awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, must gonna must bench press at least 315. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have a question here and stuff like that for sure. Because um, it, it really is not a gym for everybody. You know, um, it is a gym for you if you want it to be, though, for sure. Um, we, won't, we wouldn't discriminate. Uh, I'm happy to have somebody in there that's that's very, very overweight that wants to lose weight and is passionate about making progress in their life. And they're absolutely the right person. You don't have to be a big bodybuilder or, or compete in MPC to, to go to the gym. But if you do, you're certainly welcome. You know, we got the logo gym Manu is gracious enough to allow uh, the Red Kingdom gyms to use the MPC big logo. We're the only gym in America other than his gym in Pittsburgh that has his permission to put that on the wall. So I think that's pretty damn cool. And uh, in exchange for that, we let any MPC uh, promoter or you know if, if somebody wants to do a posing clinic they can do it for free and have our support and we give goodie bags to all the competitors and stuff so we try to make it ourselves uh, available and friendly to any promoter or chairman or whatever so that they can use the gym for for nothing wow cool i almost forgot huge smoothie bar probably one of the biggest yeah. the biggest i've ever seen huge yeah. retail shop inside there too with the supplements yeah. and the clothing I mean, this is a this is a very large facility it's just, it's they, they, the big thing around you it's a big a really big revenue generating thing is for us is that the, the pro, pro shop is like a big deal. It's, it's when you walk in, you see it through the, the big center uh, dome there. You can see through it and in there is, you know, probably 1500 square feet or so, maybe ish, something like that of every supplement, every piece of apparel we've ever, we've ever made, you know, uh, or everything that's available now. And uh, we have great deals just like on the site. And uh, a lot of times people want to pick up their stuff right there. And so this is the spot to do it to get, the best deals and, and we have every single product so like you go to gnc we'll have a lot of protein bars there but we won't have every flavor 
you know, uh, you go to Walmart, we'll have two flavors of Total War, but that's it, yeah. you know? So yeah, that, that's going to change soon. But, um, but they, uh, this, this gives the people opportunity to go buy the apparel and try stuff on and make sure they like it. And uh, it's been, that's been a big thing at the, specifically at the Tennessee gym where uh, our manager Cody has been in the gym business uh, his whole adult life since his first job when he was, uh, uh, I think he said 16 or 15 was his first job was cleaning the gym uh, all the way up to running 30 gyms at the end. Uh, he was general manager of 30 regional manager. And he said he, in a whole month working at these, I'm not going to mention the brand, the gym brand, a whole month, we do more in sales of supplements in one day than they're doing in a whole month. Wow. Uh, so Interesting. Uh, so people go. are, sorry, I'm back. Okay. So people are, uh, people are definitely using it. Cool. And, um, you know, we, we talk about, there's a huge interest in people wanting to open up their own Redcon One gyms. You've been getting a lot of inquiries about that. So what do you plan to do? Are you going to franchise? Yeah, we're working on, a, on all that. We're, we're putting together, like I said, the brand package, the SOPs, everything, the package where we could take it and say, this is what Red Con One Gym needs to be. This is how you do it for yourself. This is how you could take our model and make money, um, you know, doing this for you in your city or town or whatever. Um, that is definitely part of the plans. I don't know if it's going to be a licensing thing or a franchise thing. That's kind of a details for the lawyers, uh, but it is definitely in the works. And um, we have had a lot of people interested and reach out about it, um, seeing the success that we've had. And uh, once we have everything, uh, the model kind of in place uh, and proof of concept with the second location, it's something that we're gonna, we're gonna do. So maybe maybe one day the gym business is a, a, a big portion of Redcon One. It certainly, it certainly helps the brand in general. Yeah, because yeah, I could tell you walking, I haven't been to Boca, but after I went to that Nashville one, A, I was kind of wishing I lived in Nashville. And B, I'm <laughs> like, man, I wish there was one of these around me. You know, just selfish, yeah. selfish, the selfish meathead wanted one. Yeah, that, of course. It's, it's spectacular. So, uh, man, guys, again, Nashville, fastest, like you said, fastest growing city in the U.S. right now. And this gym is just incredible. Um, it's a bodybuilder's paradise. Uh, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. But if you are a bodybuilder, just the equipment alone in there is going to have you just going ballistic. You'll be losing yeah. your, you will lose your mind. I was taking videos and pictures, sending the people, and they were just mm -hmm. so so jealous I'm like ah oh, wish i was there i wish i was there but uh yeah you guys you can go there it's nashville it's not that far away from wherever you are it's a hop no. skip and a jump so yeah aaron congratulations on the place uh i loved it uh the grand opening was was quite a quite a day i don't think it could have been any better than it was it was uh, a big Thank big you. success and uh you know the brand just keeps on growing and gym supplements god knows what you've got next <laughs> well apparel supplements gyms who knows but uh, yeah, wishing you continued success. And again, guys, Redcon One Gym in Nashville. If you're ever in Nashville, you'll kick yourself if you don't go to this place. It's that good. That good. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. So Aaron, thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man. And uh, that's it, guys. Well, thanks for watching Ron Line Report. Aaron Singerman, all about the Redcon One Gym in Nashville. See you next time.